is The Man Without Qualities, a novel worth your time? I don't know. Let's find out. Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a thousand and one book countdown for you. If you're not familiar with the thousand and one book countdown, I will leave a card up here for you somewhere over here where you can go and check out the original video where I talk all about the uh, the project, but basically I'm reading books off of the thousand and one books you must read before you die list and slowly making my way through all of them. I of course made it harder on myself than it needed to be because I combined all editions of that book together and ended up with 1,315 books and I have a ways to go, but I've been having so much fun documenting my progress out here on YouTube since I got closer to the thousand and one number. Please consider giving me a subscribe and sticking around and seeing how far I'm make it through my massive, massive project. It is a project that is going to take me years to complete. So I'm still having a lot of fun with it though. All right, but for today, what we will go ahead and do is put up our numbers, which are 878, which is the number I have left of the entire list and 38. Every year at the beginning of the year, I pre-select 52 books that I want to try and focus on in the year, and I just slowly try and get that number down to zero. I have not been successful so far, and it's not looking great for this year, to be honest with you. At the end of June, I should have 26 books left. I am a fair number off of that. So, uh, but yeah, that number is 38. The first book that I have for you today is a monster. This book is the second longest book according to Goodreads on the list overall. Uh, the only book that's longer is the Proust set of seven books. That's a lot. <laughs> um, there are a couple of other ones like the 1001 Arabian Nights, which you can argue is probably longer. But according to Goodreads, this one is the number, the second longest book on the list overall. And that book is The Man Without Qualities by Robert Musil. And you can look at this and go, that doesn't look that long. That's 700 and something pages. Fair. This is not you know, too long. I certainly have read longer books than this. However, we also have this, volume two. <laughs> volume two is over a thousand pages, totaling 1,776 pages overall for this particular book. This is the only book by Musil that's on the thousand and one countdown. Uh, I'm gonna put one of those down. <laughs> I'll just hold this one over here. Um, it was originally published between 1930 and 1943, and there's some you know, discrepancy in kind of those dates because Musil originally published some things, and then there was a later version, and an even later version than that of this particular book with more and more kind of content being added as later publication dates happen. Musil worked on this book for 20 years, so a long, long time putting this book together at 1,700 pages. You can see why. Uh, and you quickly find out right from the beginning of this book that this is not a character novel, character-driven novel. It is not a plot-driven novel. It is kind of a meandering tale with philosophy interspersed all all throughout this book. I would say it's largely philosophy based. The characters are not really front and center in this and a lot of this. It's not necessarily a difficult read. It's just long and where I struggled with it was I wanted more of characters, more understanding of what they were doing or how they were, what was going to happen to them those parts of it. When we were in the characters scenes, I thought those were really interesting, but there are long, long sections of just philosophy, which is not unfortunately my thing. <laughs> and that's not really the biggest issue I have. The biggest issue that I have with this is that it's unfinished and I didn't know it was unfinished. It's hard to believe a 1774 pages a novel is unfinished, especially after he had worked on it for 20 years. However, it was. The original publication that Musil put out was 1130 pages, which takes you into volume two of this set of books. Uh, and at the end of volume two, or at the end of that, there is no resolution to any story. Uh, characters are kind of left in the, almost in the middle of things kind of occurring, and you're left without 
any kind of conclusion of the end of Musil's writing. And so there are, the second kind of part that was published were 20 additional chapters that were kind of, they call them gallery or glossary uh, chapters that were published after that. And they, you know, also are out there not really taking the story to its conclusion. And yeah. And then the main novel ends. That's where it ends with no conclusion, no resolution to the story. Then there are 400 plus pages of notes, character development, some possible endings, multiple endings. And I just went, no, no, I'm not going to read all of those. I know I could get some ideas of maybe where Musil was going to take the characters, but in the end, I just didn't want to spend more of my time reading it. It's really unfortunate because I was actually really looking forward to this one and wanted this to be just amazing, absolutely incredible. And I think I read this also, Fraser Simon read this at the same time as was Greg at another Bibliophile Reads and Fraser had a great line. He said, it's readable, but forgettable. It's like already the characters are escaping and going away. The most interesting character is a character named my Mooseburger, named Mooseburger, and I didn't get enough of that particular character. It's not necessarily a nice character. Some of the most interesting stuff resolved around that particular character, and the ending didn't give me what I was looking for. So yeah, is it worth it? If you like philosophy, this might be a great book for you. If you don't need character development and a concluded storyline, you might like this one. For me, it was a lot. And I can't say that I was, I can't say that it was worth all of the time that I spent. It took me almost the entire month to get to through the 1400 pages. Uh, it wasn't necessarily, like I said, a huge trial. I just didn't love it. Uh, and yeah, it's just kind of, mm kind of okay in the end. I think I was more upset by the lack of resolution than anything else, but oh, oh Robert Musil, 20 years he worked on this, and I just was really, really hoping we would have more of a resolution. However, that one massive book only counts for one on my countdown, so we get to go from 878 to 877, and thankfully it was on my 2023 list, so that gets to go from 38 to 37. Okay, cool. I do have another book for you though. Yay! <laughs> the next book that I have though is this one, Blaming by Elizabeth Taylor. And it's not Elizabeth Taylor, the actress. It is a British author who wrote in the 70s. Um, this book was originally published in 1976, which was actually published posthumously, I believe by her daughter, if I remember correctly. She, Elizabeth Taylor actually has a fair number of novels, but this is the only one on the Thousand and One Countdown, so it's really interesting. There is a note in this that her mother was already ill at the time that this novel was being written, and I wonder if that accounts for some of the, you know, kind of challenges I had with it. Maybe, possibly. I don't have any plans to read any other Elizabeth Taylor books, so I, at this point, I don't know. What is this book all about, though? <laughs> this book uh, has, starts off with two characters, a married couple, Amy and Nick, and they're on a cruise ship in Istanbul, in Turkey, and they make friends with a woman whose name is Martha on the cruise ship. And then, you know, an unfortunate event happens. And the rest of the book is basically dealing with that, the fallout from that very difficult event that they went through. And it kind of tries to develop the friendship between Amy and Martha. I'm not sure it was super successful in that line. Uh, it goes, they end up back in, I believe back in England and their friendship kind of continues, kind of not. Some of the more interesting characters in this were actually the children that were written. There's some funny, funny scenes with the kids. There's a one of the girls in this, oh, she just made me chuckle because of how she would do different things. I, I really found her great. Uh, and the ending was, uh, okay. Um, there wasn't kind of enough build up or lead up to that. And so I kind of wonder if Elizabeth Taylor had been writing this earlier in her career, if we would have seen more of that friendship develop, more of those pieces kind of flushed out a little bit more than was in this. I did this as a buddy read with Britta Bowler, and I think we kind of both came to the same conclusion that it was just kind of meh, kind of okay, not great, not horrible, 
do I want to read it again? No, this is a library book, and it looks like a first edition of this published in 1976. Um, but yeah, it just was, it just was okay. It was kind of a disappointment. But blaming with Elizabeth Taylor, I do get to go. I do get to go from 877 to 876. However, it wasn't on my 2023 list. Uh, it was added much later than the 2020 when the 2023 list was created. So that number sadly stays at 37. I don't know if next year I'm going to put in a buffer number in there of ones that weren't on the list, but I'm going to count for the 2024 number. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of like that focus on the books that I already own rather than going and finding other ones, but I don't know yet. And those are the two books that I actually have for the countdown for this week. Uh, what it's actually for two weeks. Um, what am I working on next? I have my book club pick, which is for June, which is Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. I will be starting this one over the weekend. I'm very excited about this. If you want to join in the read, the link to the Discord is in the description below for you. We'd love to have you out there. Uh, but yeah, I have high expectations for this one. I've heard some mixed things about it, so we'll see. Outside of that, the 1001 book I wanted to get to in May and just didn't get to is this one, Out of Africa. I think I'm going to put it back on the shelf. I did listen to it as an audiobook, but it turns out it was an abridged audiobook, and I really want to read the whole thing. I've heard this is lovely. The tone of the audiobook, not necessarily the narrator, but the, the actual tone of it is really calming and kind of lovely. And so I want to take this for a moment when I just want to have a calm moment and just, you know, just sit and read it. But that's the other one I didn't get to. I also have started the buddy read with Dia over at Novel Idea and Tiffany at Beautiful Minutia, and we have started reading Borges. Now, we are officially reading Labyrinths. Uh, Labyrinths selected short stories. It has essays and parables in it. Uh, and <laughs> what I realized is this book, Ficciones, has a lot of the exact same stories in it. Both of these books are on the countdown. What I don't know is if one was in one edition of the book of the thousand and one books you must read before you die, or if it was in different years, is that kind of why both are there? Because there's only five stories in this that are not in Labyrinth. So I would be able to scratch two books off because both I have both Labyrinths and Ficciones on my list. But that one, we are through three stories so far at the time I'm filming this, and it's a head scratcher so far. So yeah, I don't know. We'll, wish me luck on this one. <laughs> I do have a number of other buddy reads starting over the next week or two, uh, which will be wonderful, but I don't have the books sitting here at my desk. And that's what I have for my countdown this week. Not too bad. I, I mean, I am happy to get that massive, massive two volume set off of my list. I'm, I'm, I feel like it's an accomplishment to finish it. Uh, and thank you again to Fraser and Greg for <laughs> attempting to read it with me. I do appreciate it a great deal. <laughs> uh, but with that, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks. Bye.